afternoon, everyone. Okay, okay. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> it's good to be here again. Thank you for the warm welcome. Thank you to... Um, the, I want to appreciate the leadership of this ministry, Pastor Buki and Pastor Bola Ajide. Thank you. And I also want to acknowledge the um, committee for putting together this session and ensuring that we can talk about mental health and well-being. Hallelujah. So usually, before my sessions, before... Um, my sessions, I like to engage the audience or participants in a brief mindfulness session. And we will be doing that. How many of you were here for the conference, the Impact 3.0 conference? Okay, so you can relate. So now let's have a brief mindfulness session before we go into this conversation proper. So please sit up. Sit up. Yes, good. Now, please close your eyes. Yes. <laughs> I don't want to come down from this place. Please close your eyes. It's a brief mindfulness session, and it's going to be impactful to your mental health and well-being, and even to your physical well-being. So close your eyes. The purpose of closing your eyes is so you cannot be distracted, and so you can just focus. Now, just pay attention to my voice. When you inhale, when I tell you to inhale, inhale and count to four in your mind or however, count to four and then when you exhale, exhale through your mouth and count to six. So now, let's breathe in. One, two, three, four. Exhale. Please close your eyes. I'm catching late commas. Have you heard they say it? <laughs> Please close your eyes or focus on a particular thing. So breathe in again. Ensure you are sitting up. And if you are joining from online, if you are lying down or something, just take a comfortable position. That's the main thing. But please sit up. Breathe in again. Now exhale. Good. Breathe in again. Exhale. Fantastic. Now breathe in again. Inhale again. And exhale. So now, instead of counting to four, just breathe in normally. Breathe in normally and breathe out. But this time, just pay attention to your breathing. Pay attention to your breathing. Let it be as if you are just learning to breathe for the first time. Pay attention to your breathing. Notice the inflow and outflow of air. Notice the inflow and outflow of air. Just breathe normally. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Don't try to control your breathing. Fantastic. Now, quickly, I want you, as you are breathing in, I want you to scan through your body, mentally scan through your body from air to toe as you breathe in and as you breathe out. Mentally scan through your body from head to toe. Some people are looking at me. We will talk about stress today. <laughs> Mentally scan through your body as, you're, as you breathe. Good. Now, if you notice there's any tension in any part of your body, try to release it as you exhale. As you exhale, imagine that tension in that particular part of your body released. Good. Good. Now, let's bring our awareness back 
to this present moment. Bring your awareness back to this present moment. Now wiggle your toes and your fingers. Wiggle your toes and your fingers and you can open your eyes now. So what we did is a brief mindfulness practice. It's a breathing exercise. And this breathing exercise that some of us, I noticed some of us did not do it. <laughs> and um, let me not shake the table yet why you did not do it. But I want to talk about mindfulness, right? And I'm talking about coping with stress. What is mindfulness? What is mindfulness? Mindfulness is intentionally focusing your attention in the present moment. Intentionally focusing your attention in the present moment without judgment or without wishing it were different. So what am I saying? It is a conscious and deliberate attention focus. How you consciously and deliberately get your mind to the present state. It involves being aware of your feelings, of your thoughts, of your thoughts, of your bodily sensations and the surrounding environment. Why is mindfulness important in managing stress? We all, I mean, we have busy lives, right? We all live busy lives and all that. And stress can come from different factors. It can come from work. It can come from family pressures. It can come from unemployment. It can come from just living in Nigeria. Am I right? In fact, it can come from just living in Lagos. Am I right? In fact, it can come from just living in Lagos. I mean, some of us live in, we live on the mainland and then we walk on the island. Is it enough to be stressed? But, and then when we are stressed, what is its impact on our body? What is the impact of stress on our mental health? What is the impact of stress on our overall well-being? How many of you are aware that stress can contribute to high blood pressure. It can contribute to anxiety and depression. It can contribute to weight gain. Digestive problems. It can even, stress can contribute to difficulty in not sleeping well, like sleep problems. You know some of us sleep, we sleep at night, but we don't sleep well. Because there's something called the sleep cycle. And if you do not complete that sleep cycle, you've not, you've not had good quality sleep. So there are so many ways stress impacts your well-being, not just your mental health, but your well-being. And one of the tools, so in case you did not catch it earlier, I am a positive psychology practitioner and I've carved for myself a niche as a happiness and wellness coach and an advocate for mental health. Now in my organization, Happiness NG, what we do is that we use evidence-based practices in positive psychology to empower people to improve their mental health and well-being to protect their mental health and well-being. It's more like prevention than cure. And one of the tools we, so particularly we help people manage and overcome stress, anxiety, and depression. So it doesn't lead to suicide, but most importantly, so they can live happy, fulfilling lives. One of the tools, one of our resources that we use to empower people to overcome stress is this mindfulness practice. Now, most of us are usually distracted. Most of us, because of our busy lives, because we have different things to do, our mind is usually wandering from one thing to another. Our thoughts are jumping from one thought to another. We're trying to put a lot of things together. And then, because we are trying to do these multiple things, 
And if you leave it to our mind, it will wonder. It will think about the past, think about the present, think about the future, think about your neighbor's problem, think about the one that doesn't even concern you. Am I right? And when you are, when the mind is operating in this way, what happens is that if you are not able to control it, if you are not able to bring yourself to a centered point, it impacts your well-being. So this is what happens. It, your brain, your brain interprets this as when your brain is trying to, um, when you're trying to think of different things or your mind is just drifting from one point to another, your brain interprets it as stress. How? Do you know that stress is actually your body's natural response, your body's response to um, any challenge? It's your body's response to challenge. So when your mind is drifting from one point to another, when you're, when you're thinking of different things and you do not have time to process your thoughts, you do not have time to um, segment your thoughts, and you're just moving from one point to another in your mind, the brain takes it that you are being under stress. Because the brain is not able to... It, it, overwhelms, the brain's cogni uh, it overwhelms the brain, basically. I'm trying to not use some certain terms so we can understand it. It overwhelms the brain. And when this happens, the brain activates the body's stress system which is designed to protect you from flight and fright situations. Am I, are we relating? Good. Now, when this system is activated, the brain will now signal to the glands, adrenal glands in your body to release stress hormones, including cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone. When cortisol levels are increased in your body, it leads to several negative effects. So can you see the way your brain is interpreting your desire to, your mind's ability to wander about? Can you see the way your brain is receiving this response? And because your mind is wandering about, the brain is receiving it and trying to protect you. But in trying to protect you, the body releases something called cortisol. And when there are high levels of cortisol in your body, it leads to stress, yeah? Because stress, uh, cortisol is a stress hormone, right? And when there are increased levels, it now begins to produce these negative effects like anxiety, weight gain, digestive problems, suppressed immune function the person is, becomes more susceptible to illnesses. So how do you then manage distress? Let me shake a table. Let me shake this table today, once and for all. I should shake it. Multitasking is not a superpower. Rema. Let me repeat it. Multitasking is not a superpower. Your ability to handle multiple tasks, it is increasing your stress levels. It's not helping you. It is not helping you. And until you are able to control this, I mean, until you are able to learn how to be mindful, until you are able to learn how to draw your attention to the present moment, what then can we say to these things? <laughs> if you are a parent here, in fact, if you are a parent here, or... I know adults do it, but let me send this message to, to parents. I know most times when we get back from home, you want to just, you have your toddler with you and you don't want the toddler to be distracted and all that. So you give them food and you give them 
water and all that, and then the next thing, you set their tab in front of them. You are not teaching that child to focus. What you are empowering that child with is distraction. It is distraction. One of the things that um, stress causes, again, is impaired cognitive performance. What does this mean? This is a decrease in the brain's ability to effectively process information. And this leads to memory problems. There is, stress leads to memory problems. Inability to store information, difficulty remembering or recalling information. So if you're a student here and multitasking is your game, you are not helping yourself. And a lot of us, and because of the kind of lives we live, it is easy to be distracted. Am I right? It's easy to be distracted. And that's why we must make a conscious effort to always draw our attention back to the present moment. We must make a conscious effort to always center ourselves. I know we did a brief mindfulness practice and it might seem easy, but mindfulness practice is a process. It's not entirely easy because if you... If, before you know it, your mind has drifted again. In fact, how many of us are, are present here? I know some of us are already thinking of what we eat for dinner. Some of us are already just... We are here, we are registering what I'm saying, but you are thinking of that email, how you would respond to that email. You are already typing it in your head. Multitasking is not a superpower. I know you may say, but what is, what is like, what is there? Research has it that People who are, that people are constantly less happier when their minds are wandering. What does the Bible say about mindfulness? Quickly, let's open to Colossians 3 verse 23. Now, although the Bible doesn't use the term mindfulness explicitly, but it does contain principles and teachings that align closely with the practice of mindfulness. And these principles emphasize being present, meditating on God's word, and maintaining a peaceful and focused mind. Okay, so Colossians 3 verse 23 says, and whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. Whatever you do. Give me NIV. Can you please give me NIV version? Give me whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. Work at it with all your heart. This, this emphasizes being fully present. How can you work at something with all your heart if your mind is distracted? Is it possible? Give me Proverbs 4 verse 28. NIV as well, please. 28, Proverbs 4, 28. Proverbs 4, verse 28. I want us to see it together. Okay, it says... It's not up to 28. Okay, so guard your heart. Give me the Bible verse of guard your heart diligently. For out of it are the issues of life. How do you guard your heart? 
How do you guard your heart? By taking control of your attention and your focus. That's how you guard your heart. So God wants us to be present. This pop, the popular verse, Joshua 1 verse 8. What, what, Joshua 1 verse 8, what does it say? Okay. Joshua 1 8. The book of this this book of the law shall not depart from my from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it. Meditation. Meditation is a form of mindfulness, it's a form of focus. Am I right? So basically, what I'm just telling you is that. If you want to cope with stress, if you want to manifest its unshakable kingdom, you can't manifest it if you are unwell. Or can you? Because some people, can you? Is it possible? You have to protect your mental health. Despite the fact that there are different things that cause life stressors. There are different situations we face that can make us become stressed and overwhelmed. But you have a tool in your hand that can help you manage these situations. Let's open our Bible to Psalm 46 verse 10. Psalm 46, verse 10. It says, be still. Be still. Be still. This verse is enc encourages us to take a moment to pause and be still. To pause and be still. If you even want to hear God speak to you, there is a level of stillness you would attain in your spirit. True of us. Just by standing here, I can see that some people are distracted. Just by standing here. So anytime you see me smile, it's like, come back to the present moment. Take control of your thoughts. This is a skill. This, what I'm telling you here is a life skill. It's a life skill that if you don't take anything from this session, take, have it in your mind that at least every day for even if it's five minutes, you would practice mindfulness. Now, there are different ways you can practice mindfulness. In your, you, there are different ways you can inculcate it into your daily activities. Some of the ways you can do this is by being present in anything you are doing. For example, when you come back from work, you set your dining, set your food, your water. That is not the time to take your phone to start scrolling through social media. This is how it happens. Set your food, set your water, and then you use, you start scrolling through your phone. How many of us do this? Because in our mind, we are trying to do, we are trying to make the most of time. We are trying to kill two birds with one time. With, with one stone. We are trying to kill two birds with one stone. But what your brain is interpreting it as, you are just putting yourself in stress. How many of us have driven our car somewhere and then we got to the place and we had no recollection of how we got there? Sure, You had no recollection. You, it's just like you moved from point A to point B. So it, it's like we have this automatic response to want to juggle things. And you did not know then, but now you know. 
now you know. If you want to live, a, if you want for your overall well-being to be optimal, you need to learn the skill of mindfulness practice. And like I said, there are some ways you can inculcate it into your daily activity. Aside this breathing exercise that we did earlier, you can have something called mindful eating. I just, I just talked about that. Mindful eating. Paying attention to the present moment when you are enjoying your meal. See, if you even... Can you try this thing? Try to eat distracted and try to eat focused. You'll find that you enjoy your meal better when you are focused. You enjoy your meal better. It tastes better. You can sense it. You, can, you, you taste it better. Another way you can inculcate mindfulness practice into your daily activity is through mindful walking. You can set out a time to walk mindfully. Whether you are not distracted, you are not pressing your phone, you are not distracted by any other thing. You can, have, you can brush your teeth mindfully. I know a lot of us, when we are brushing our teeth, we are thinking of the day. In fact, we've run the day nine to five. We've run nine to five completely. We move to the next day, run it again. We almost run one week in one sitting. So in this little, in this act, these daily things that you do, you can cultivate the habit of mindfulness practice. Now, if you find that when you are practicing mindfulness, you are distracted, it can be a little frustrating because you want to focus for five minutes or you want to focus for 10 minutes and you are distracted. Here's what you should do. Center yourself back with your breathing. Use your breathing to bring yourself back to the present moment. The goal of mindfulness, like, or like I said earlier, mindfulness is an attentional control practice. It's the ability to control your attention. Much more than stress. When you find yourself worrying, when you find yourself being anxious about a particular thing, with mindfulness, you can bring yourself back to the present moment. When you can use mindfulness practice to overcome anxiety and panic attacks. If anyone has experienced a panic attack here, you find out that when you are having a panic attack, your mind is kind of scattered. You are thinking different things and you are just panicking. With mindfulness, you can center yourself back. Mindfulness also has been found to help people manage chronic pain. And this one, I have tested it myself. Apart from, so I've worked with different clients, but when it comes to using mindfulness to manage pain, this is a personal story. It's a, I have personal testimony to it. You can use mindfulness to manage pain. Remember, I said mindfulness is focusing in the present moment without judging it. When you focus, I, I don't, I, I'm trying to, if there is a pain in your body, or if you are feeling a particular pain, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, a long-term pain. If you are feeling a particular pain, when you center yourself on that pain, you will find out that, and this is from my own personal experience. So I was feeling a particular pain. A lot of us may be able to relate to this. And that particular day, I just said, I just used mindfulness to really focus on the pain. And I found out that I was able to manage that pain more than ever before. And ever since then, once I feel that particular pain, I'm able to, I, I, don't, I don't feel it like I used to feel it. So all I'm just saying is that it is worth trying out. Don't just live here knowing about mindfulness and not putting it into practice. Yeah? Yeah? Don't live here knowing about mindfulness and not putting it into practice. 
again, it is a state of being in the present moment. If you find that you are doing a particular thing and your mind drifts or your mind wanders, center yourself back with your breathing. Bring yourself back to the present moment. That way you are practicing mindfulness. You can, as time goes on, you do it for two minutes, you do it for three minutes, eventually you will become better. If you are a student here and you are finding it difficult to learn or study or just learn a particular thing, mindfulness can help you stay centered. Because most times you are not learning a particular thing because your mind is distracted. Am I, am I correct? You are not learning a particular thing because your mind is distracted. Over the years, I've used mindfulness to really practice a lot of things, not just on myself, but I've also used it to work with different people. And they have come with positive feedback. So, it may look like a simple process, but I pray that God gives us the grace to learn, unlearn, and relearn. You have in your hand now a tool that can help you manage stress. Stop blaming Lagos as from today. Stop blaming Lagos traffic. When you get home, practice mindfulness, even if it's for five minutes. Stay Center yourself back to the present moment. When you find your mind drifting to past things that you do not want to think about, center yourself back. Bring yourself back to the present moment. There are times I want to get maybe anxious for a particular thing or anxious. There are times I want to get anxious about a particular thing. You know, it can, just come off, um, it can just come suddenly. And then I remember and I bring myself back to the present moment. And it helps me. You can, you can schedule when you would worry with mindfulness. You can schedule a time that this time. So a particular thought is coming to your mind and it's stressing you. You can, you can center yourself back. Hold that thought and book a time you would have time for it. Am I speaking French? So, another thing I want to encourage you again is to start with small daily practices. Don't try to do it for 10 minutes because you are just starting. The benefits of mindfulness is so wide it cuts across physical well-being, psychological well-being, spiritual well-being. It is massive. I can't begin to unload everything. But as you practice, you will see the effect in your life. As you begin to do mindful practices daily, even if it's just five minutes a day, either at the beginning of your day or at the end of the day, or in between, like I said, maybe when you're brushing your teeth and all that. So, quickly, is, is multitasking a superpower? As from today, will you multitask? Who said yes? <laughs> Who said yes? I did not hear you. As from today, will you multitask? That person that said yes, you will teach us how to practice. Who said yes? Say it with your full chest. Say it with your full chest. Will you multitask? I suspect you. I suspect you. So there are two options. <laughs> What did you say? You? Questions. Did you say questions? Oh, okay, that's fine. Okay, yeah, please, go ahead. You, you have a question, right? Okay. Oh, okay. 
Okay, if you have a question and you, ju you can just write it in a piece of paper. Thank you. So when, you're, when you find your mind wandering into different situations that you don't want to think about, how do you center yourself? What kind of... Mindfulness. What, what mindfulness practice would you do? Yes. So you. Okay. Let me. Let me. Is, okay. So if you have questions, please feel free to ask. Use your breath to bring your mind to a particular, uh, let's say, problem. To the, to the present moment. Uh, to your present moment, as in, as in, let's say, for example, you have uh, multiple uh, something that's bothering your mind. So you try to use your breath to bring your mind to the present one that you're dealing with. Good. Fantastic. Let's clap for her. You have a question. Thank you very much. Um, my question centers around um, multitasking. So it's, well, it's quite challenging to hear that in the first instance, that um, it's not a superpower. Meanwhile, some of us have put it in our CVs. <laughs> ability to so, multitask. <laughs> Abil what of ability to work under pressure? pressure. pressure it's, it's I don't, you can't find it in my CV. Why? Is work not, is, is it not um, pressure enough? Is there anywhere you would work? Is there any, any task you would do that is not pressure? Okay. Then you will not add it. Why? Ability to work under high stress. And <laughs> please remove it from your CV. Yes, why you advise us to remove it on our CV? I'm just wondering for people whose phone was bought by the organization they are working with. Who's, who's phone? Who's phone? Okay. Oh, can you hear me? Okay. So I'm just wondering, people whose phones, are, okay, mobile phones are bought by the organizations they are working in. Okay, so it means that you have to attend to calls. Maybe even some of us here seated are working while you are talking about multitasking. You are actually working. Actually, when you started talking, I had to go outside take a call coming from work. I don't know what else, how you are going to be able to cope with that. An already challenging society where that is a skill for survival. So how do you do that? So, so let me get your question. You said some organizations have given people mobile phones, right? And then you have to take the call. Right, and then how do you manage that if multitasking is not okay? So, again, what you did standing up to take your call outside and coming back here when you, when you went to take your call, you were not paying attention to what was here, you were there. Do you understand? And then it would now become... Yeah? It would now become multitasking if you are here, you are taking the call and you are listening to me, acting as if you can do two things at the same time. It, it happens. And it's a skill that we have normalized that shouldn't be normal because it is increasing our stress levels. Are you going to put your health at the detriment of your job? So you are the one, your, your work 
when you are at work, that's why they say, don't take work home, don't bring home to the work. You... It is possible. Uh -uh. Wait, you are saying it's not possible as if... Uh, why? Why is it not possible? We have... No yeah, we have normalized a lot of things that are not helpful. And as the moment you begin to protect your own mental health, because, see, if anything happens to anybody health-wise, your work, the way it will move on, you will not believe it. You won't believe it. So when you are at work, you focus on your task. You focus on your task. See, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not just saying it because I'm here. I've worked too. I've worked as well. Do you understand? And when I understood the power of focused attention, I will not joke with myself. When I'm working, I'm working. There are times, sometimes when I'm eating, I want to quickly watch a movie. It happens. And then sometimes I tell myself, focus on this food. So if you meet me in an eatery and I'm scrolling through my phone, does not mean you will not say, ah, that lady that said, no, 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 no. You, that's why <laughs> it is practice. It's not mastery. You continue to do it till you get used to, till you are able to do it well. And then till you are able to increase the time and your capacity. When I am at work, I focus on my work. I try to meet up my task within the time frame. See, do you know that you can even, you can't finish work. You can't finish office work. The, you, how do they say it? Your, your ability to do work gets you more work. Or how do they say it? What's that, what's that saying? What? The reward for good, for good work is more work. So sometimes, I will not say what I want to say, but work expands. When you finish that particular task, that deadline, you meet it, another one will come. So would you now keep jeopardizing your health for work that would not finish? What happens when? Yeah, so good. I like that. What happens when you don't meet your deadlines? Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. you will continue tomorrow. Because you see that deadline, if you are not there, it will be met. In fact, if the person's spirit sees the people meeting it, you will not believe it. It will be overmet. You know, the things you think you cannot do can be done by 10 million people. Set out time for, that's why I said focused attention. Even the multitasking is not helping you focus on the problem quickly. I, I mentioned it here. Yeah. Yes, you have a question. Okay, please. Um, in the All meantime, right, um, okay. I have two questions basically. So, um, before I go on, I'm this type of person that mostly when I'm at work, my lunch break, I like to eat and watch a movie at the same time. So, now I've learned that that is bad. So, I'll try not to do that anymore. So, my first question is while you're working, is it okay to listen to music when you're working just to calm your mind, to be focused on whatever it is you're doing? Or would you also see that as a distraction? That's my number one question. So um, no, my, my number two question is more like, um, normally Nigeria is full of multitasking. That is what I would say. So I think what, should, what you should be telling us is how to manage ourselves, or how to bring, out, how to bring down the pressure, and how to, how to not multitask too much for it to affect our health. Thank you. Thank you for that. So, let me start with the second one. What I should be telling you is how to reduce multitasking. What am I telling you? How to, how to manage multitasking. Ha. Huh. 
Exactly. He's getting it. Exactly. So I should. How do. Yes, sir. You see, I think the summary of our sister blessing to us today simplifies the spiritual confirmation of what she's telling us in the physical. Because the spirit rules the physical. And under the explanation of the spirit, he said yesterday or tomorrow is not in God's life. But today, an opportunity to serve. Because yesterday is 24 hours, today is 24 hours, tomorrow is 24 hours. 24 times 3 is equal to 72. And when God created 8 billion plus population in the world, He gave us 24 hour capacity. So when you carry 73 hours to on top of 24 hour capacity, it's original hypertension, original blood pressure. Bless you. Okay, thank you, sir, for that. Thank you, sir, for that. So, like, like I said earlier, like I said, see, we have inculcated the habit of multitasking. It is not, that's why in life you learn, unlearn, and relearn. If you are stuck on what you know, then you don't have the ability to grow. I've already explained how multitasking or how the brain interprets it when you are performing different tasks at the same time. I'm telling you, I've already told you that this is what the brain sees it as and then releases the stress hormones and then these stress hormones, an increase in the levels of this stress hormone can cause certain kind of illnesses and diseases. Do we need to do quadratic equation again? So it's, it's pretty much clear. It's how we can manage it on our own. There are times, because you are, we are just starting, there are times you would stay mindful for two minutes. In fact, if I, if I do another mindfulness test, if I tell all of us to just close our eyes now for in, in the next three minutes to just focus on our breathing, just breathe in and breathe out, you will find that some people are even in Canada. No, seriously, because your mind, your mind has the ability to wander, but you have the ability to center yourself back. Your mind and your body in one place. Your mind is somewhere else. Can't you see the strain is putting on the body? You, you have a question? Yes, please. So, so yes, so you, are, you, you said, can you listen to music and eat and drink and... Can you listen to music while working? That's multitasking. You said multitasking. Did you say that's multitasking? Okay, okay, she's, a she's asking, can you listen to music? Okay, you replace the music, you replace the um, scrolling through social media with music now. You replaced one with one because I'm saying, I said, mindfulness is focused attention in the present moment. So if that music you are listening to, you know, sometimes you are playing music in the background and you're not even paying attention to it. And you are paying attention to whatever you are doing at that moment. So it's you that can decide if you are shifting focus. And when you are shifting focus, you will now be able to bring yourself back to the... To, you, are, you are not able to... You, are, you now center yourself, basically. Then what was your first question again? I've answered that. Then the second question. I've answered it. Uh -uh. Wow. So someone... Thank you, ma. I think one of the things we need to clarify is the fact that, uh, going back to his question, is that do we believe that multitasking makes us more productive? That's the argument there. Okay. So I think, I've tried it before also. I'm also like, I like to multitask. 
But when I read the book and I saw that they said, prioritize your assignments, what you need to do in a day. Don't start doing any other one till you have finished the one you've prioritized. So maybe you have four tasks. You say priority A, B, C, D. Maybe you have emails to reply. You have uh, calls to make. You have family business to attend to. So if then you prioritize and said, okay, this is more important to me now. When you are doing your emails, finish all the emails work you need to do before going to task B. If a call comes in when you are doing the email, don't stop, don't pause your email to answer the call and then try to continue because that time and pause, it takes your mind more time to focus, focus back on that first activity. And so that you're juggling, in fact, is actually wasting more time for you and making you less productive. So when you prioritize, I think that also helps out. Might not even just the health benefits of multitasking. So just to add that. Thank you for that. So how many people actually believe that? Okay. If you think multitasking makes you more productive, let me see your hand. Very productive. <laughs> very. Very. I like that. And if you think multitasking makes you less productive, let me see your hand. Thank you, sir. Okay, Ma, please go ahead with your question. Praise the Lord. I'm very, very grateful for this gathering today. Ma, I have, to, um, I have one question for you. And the other one is for you to help us spread it around. Because I am a cook, pure Africa dishes. When I was working in a place, an eatery in a lucky face one, um, we are supposed to have each uh, duty that we deliver to. But when at least me, me three people is not on duty, you that person running your own duty, you have to run that duty together making four. And when you complain that you are tired, they ask you, are you tired of the job? And if you refuse to deliver that job, you are out of that job. That is it. What you are trying to say, we all understand. But what we are trying to let you know is that in this country, multitasking can never be put full stop on it. That's why I'm One, telling you. Number okay. two, ma'am, please, I want to ask you. Okay. As you are now, maybe you are self-employed now. Eh? Yes. Your staff, are you sure that all these things you are telling us, you don't push it to them? Because yes, yes, you have to tell us also because they said you, uh, you have to learn from your teacher, you understand? Yes. One thing we are telling you, we are not just arguing anything here, but we are trying to let you know that this country, multitasking can never be put full stop. But in other countries, it works. You in understand? other countries, it works. It works, yes, because why? <laughs> they follow protocols. They follow rules and regulations, but not in this country. Okay, thank it's you. It's only God that will help us. Amen. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. I, li I like what you said. I like what you said. I mean, I, I, I like what you said. So can we answer? I, I, I have less than three, three minutes, so I want us to, like, you know, cover this quickly. Now, what... Madam, I, are you with me? To answer your question, thank you for your question. Now, to answer that question, you said people at work, you know, when you are working in an organization, they give you multiple tasks and all that. When you are working in an organization, you do your multiple tasks and all that. When you get back home, you practice mindfulness. Will your... Or ga you at home from practicing five minutes deep breathing exercise. Because see, the impact of distress, you, I cannot, you can't control what your boss would do at work. If they give you, even, see, madam, even if they give you, even if they tell you, cook this fried rice, wash these dishes, do this, you cannot. Can you do it? Who said yes? Can you do it? Okay, okay, now, for those that say, for those, wait now, help me to help you. Hello? For those that are saying multitasking makes them productive. Ma, I, I, I know your face. I have marked your face. <laughs> for 
are you that said multitasking makes you productive? Imagine you are cooking. I, I don't know what you do, but I would just use food, for example. The food you cook when you pay attention and the one you cook when you are distracted, do they taste the same? They can you, you, They can't. Even if you are... They, do, do, Imagine you, you are cooking rice. If I have less than one minute. Imagine you are cooking rice. You just, go, you just go to the kitchen. Your mind is somewhere else. You just pick salt. Just throw the salt. Go away. Go to multitasking. Those of you that practice multitasking, that says it makes you productive, we, we, will both, we would agree to disagree. But what I want you to do, don't just take what I said. Practice it. Focus on a particular task. Put your mind to it. And then do another task distracted. Let's see the outcome. It's not, it's not, it's, you do what works for you. If you, if they both give you 100% results, then don't practice mindfulness. But for those that understand that you need focused attention, and for those that understand the impact of stress on the body, please practice mindfulness. And again, hey God, you have a question? Okay. Okay, please, can we take questions? Oh, I mean, I, I, I don't know, I don't know. Okay, please. For those that have questions, um, can we get the mic to them so that it's quick? And you said in my organization, you said in my organization, do I, <laughs> you said in my organization, do I allow my staff practice mindfulness? I don't understand. Is it that, we, should I explain mindfulness again? Because mindfulness is not an office job. It's not a general work. It is personal. It is personal. If I give, if, if I give my staff some, a task to work on, they can even be there and they are not there. Do you know? They can be looking at their book and they are not looking at it. They can be looking at their computer and they are not looking at it. So, you, you are distracted in different ways. Why don't you be... I, I, I wasn't going to say attracted. Why do, you are distracted in so many ways. Do you get... So, give me the word. You see, you can be attracted or you can be focused. You can be focused. Distractions come anytime. You can also focus yourself. Please, questions, questions, questions. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. You Hello, Ma. Yes, please. I'm with you. Me? Yes. My question is this. I want to ask if my brain is not under stress or pressure. I cannot sleep with music on. My mind and my brain will be in that music and I won't be able to sleep. So I want to know if I don't have issue with my brain. Then concerning multitasking, as a mother without help, at times I will be at, sometimes I will be using washing machine to wash clothes and I will be cooking in the kitchen. And the boys will be fighting at the same time. Really, I must confess that it has effect. I must confess that it has effect. But in a situation like that, that you are saying that Multitasking is not a super skill or a super power. I really don't, don't get that. But I get that of concentration that when you are doing a task, you give it 100% concentration. But at the same time, how do I concentrate while I'm washing clothes, cooking in the kitchen, and the boys are in the sitting room? Thank you for that question. How do you con so for the first question you said that um, you can't sleep without music okay you can't sleep with music then turn it off your husband is the one to <laughs> okay see so your husband your husband is, is playing music and you it's affecting you right it's not making you sleep well uh, so there are earplugs you can get earplugs, you can sleep in another room, you can... Ah, this is husband and wife matter. 
They said we should not add to us. <laughs> so I don't want to talk. But what is happening is that you are not getting good quality sleep from your complaint. And you need to find ways to correct that. Your husband likes to sleep with music. You don't like to sleep with music. You have to devise ways because you people will sleep in the same room. You have to devise ways, maybe get earplugs, maybe sleep earlier than when he... I mean, people snore. People snore. People have partners that snore and they use earplugs, right? The husband will use ear... Or your, or you can get earpiece for him. Since he, he enjoys it, you don't enjoy it. Does that make sense? But you need to, you need to like pay attention to your... You need to pay attention because the more you don't sleep is impacting your health. And you are a mother. You have children. You work all day. At night, you can't sleep. You need to find solution to that. So I've given you like two solutions. Earpiece for your husband. Earplugs for you. Something has to happen. You cannot abandon him every time. I cannot. I will not advise that. So maybe you sleep. If your husband is a morning person, another thing again, if your husband is a morning person, you can sleep from 6 to 12. Then he will sleep. <laughs> okay, I'm just joking. But then your second question, how do you um, navigate and lean? Different? I see, I'm not, taking, I'm not saying that we will not do different things. I'm not saying that we would not have multiple tasks. I'm not saying that your mind will not wander. I'm talking about your ability to bring it back, to manage it. Or do you want to be stressed? We are talking about how to cope with stress because of its impact on our health. So it's not about the things that are happening. It's about how do you manage it. That is the topic. How to manage stress using mindfulness. And then you can do 10,000 things and have five minutes time for yourself. Do you know most times we don't even have time for ourselves? Most times we don't even have time to process our own thoughts. Some, some of us walk, we wake up 4.30 and our body, is already, our body moves all through the day till we come to sleep. It's about setting time out of that busy schedule for you to practice something that can help your brain. Any other question? Okay, please. We are, we are. Okay, please. So, so time is um, time is fast spent. Time is fast spent. The questions. Oh, please. Let me just these questions. Um, with Nigeria's situation now, multitasking is good because for us to achieve, my question is, if you said, how can you achieve your aims in this Nigeria without multitasking? See, hey God. Let, I was, yesterday, I was preparing my notes for this session and I had a, I, I was trying to roll up something. So I had something in my hand I was trying to roll. I held, I was trying to multitask, rolling it and listening. You know, I stayed there, neither achieving both of them. Then at a point, I had to get myself that, are you rolling this thing or are you reading? So I focused, I rolled it, two seconds I was done, then I went back to task. I know time is fast multitaskers in the house. Madam, I know your face. <laughs> try it. See, just try to multitask and try to focus on a particular task. Don't separate it and see how productive one would be over the other. You can't... I'm not, I'm not here to speak theory. I'm not here to just say things that I've not practiced. I'm not here to just say things that people have not practiced. I'm telling you real life situations. Okay? So, um, but feel free to learn, unlearn, and relearn. And again, protect your mental health. Thank you.